Good morning, everyone. Just popping on and seeing all the Zoom boxes and seeing everyone's name, who I haven't seen some of you in so long. It makes me want to cry. I'm so happy. Congratulations <laughs> on having Thanks. a baby and your marriage. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Happy Thank New you. Year. I'm so good to see you. Me too. Oh, as everyone's setting up their space at home, um, We'll see what props you'd like or what you have available. Um, two blocks can always be helpful, but um, I'll be using a blanket. Um, two blocks throughout class. If you don't have those goodies though, of course, you'll be just fine without them. Um, for those of you who are kind of new to my class or have never taken class with me, hi, Julie. Uh, my name is Caitlin and it's such a pleasure to hold space for you and teach a practice on New Year's Day um, just to celebrate and kind of share my three years of sobriety which is like very surreal for me to be able to celebrate and um, share with everyone and with this community uh, my husband Kevin who's reclined on his back already and my lovely yoga model he'll be with me um, collating the practice um, for those of you that don't already know but I'm five and a half months pregnant so um, there's just certain things that I can't do in the physical practice and if I'm teaching and doing the class It'll be really winded and quite loud and huffing and puffing in your ears, which I don't want to do to you all. Um, so I'll do the best I can just balancing the teaching and the demonstrating aspect. Um, but just to go back really quickly before we get started, um, this day, it holds, gosh, just like so much significance and importance in my life. Three years ago on um, New Year's Day, I remember waking up. Um, and just being so painfully, so painfully hungover and, um, you know, like having to teach yoga classes and it was just, it felt like such a disconnect from my heart, my body, my mind. And I was so disappointed and so disheartened and quite frankly, really tired. I was really tired and exhausted with myself. And that day, three years ago, um, like on a very low stake, I just decided to, attempt dry January. And those 30 days just kind of changed like my entire life. And it's, it's been so powerful and wildly humbling and really beautiful and hard, but I'm just so glad to be able to share um, this practice and, you know, like my vulnerability and my story with you, because it's just been such a such a wild ride, but um, thank you all so much for carving out the time today and um, like doing yoga with me and my husband and this community. It's so nice to have you all here and it really means like more than I can put into words. So I can't thank you enough for carving out this time on New Year's Day. I'm so grateful to, you know, I have everyone's energy and attention. It's so heart filling. So again, thank you so much. Um, it's so great to not be hungover. <laughs> um, just be here with an open heart and an open, clear mind with you all. Um, so again, thank you for carving out the time and thank you for showing up for yourself and showing up for me and giving me my little hearts and clapping hands and all that good stuff. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Um, so for centering, we'll get started in a comfortable reclined position on your back body. If you're settled in another pose, if you prefer to start upright, that's totally fine. We will do kind of an opening meditation that I'll take you through. So I want you to keep in mind, you're going to be in this shape for about 10 minutes. Um, I'm just going to scan through, make sure that we have everyone muted just before we get started. And a reminder, just with the whole Zoom deal, um, I'll keep my eyes on it, but we give others the same grace that we give ourselves. If someone pops in late and they're unmuted, I'll hop on the computer and I will certainly mute them quickly, just so you all know. Um, as you're settling into your space, a reminder that your first pose is meant to feel both safe and sustainable. The shape that Kevin has opted for is reclined butterfly. So he's got the soles of his feet together, his bent knees open wide. If you want to recruit your blocks, um, this is a great place to put blocks at the outer legs. It's a great opportunity to put some blocks underneath your heart or the back of your head, even a folded blanket, if you want that mild heart opening sensation. Okay. And you take as much time as you feel you really want or need settling into this first pose. Mm 
And so welcome yourself and those around you to your January 1st Monday morning practice. Take a long, slow, deep breath into your belly and open mouth, exhale, let it go. Try that on two more times with your wholehearted attention. Take a big breath in. Open mouth, clear it out. One more time through. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest. And open mouth, let it go. And with that same sensitivity, bring an easy closure to your mouth. Start to move the breath in and out through the nose. Just notice how these first few rounds help you to feel a little more integrated, a little more present. a little more willing to be right here. You notice the world of sound that fluctuates around you in your studio space. And not judging what you hear, not even reacting to what you hear, just welcoming it in. allowing all these intricacies to exist. The acknowledgement of sound, it's one of the simplest ways for you to heighten your meditative state, for you to aliven the openness in your heart. And this morning, I'd like to share with you today's reading from the book, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations on the Path to Freeing Your Soul. And as I share this passage, my invitation to you, as always, you take what resonates. Take whatever it is that strikes a chord in the willingness of your heart. And by conscious choice, you then leave the rest behind. Much like any meditation or concentration practice, when you find yourself getting antsy or divided, know that that's okay, it's part of your human experience, but kindly come back. Just feel your body breathing, listen to the sounds, and you come on back. January 1st, honor the beginning. Beginnings can be delicate or explosive. They can start almost invisibly or arrive with a big bang. Beginnings can hold the promise of new lessons to be learned, new territory to be explored, and old lessons to be recalled, practiced, and appreciated. Beginnings hold ambiguity, promise, fear, and hope. Don't let the lessons, the experience of the past, dampen your enthusiasm for beginnings. Just because it's been hard doesn't mean it will always be that difficult. Don't let the heartbreaks of the past cause you to become cynical, close you off to life's magic and promise. Open yourself wide to all that the universe has to say. Let yourself begin anew, pack your bags, choose carefully what you bring, because packing is an important ritual. Take along some humility and the lessons of the past. Toss in some curiosity and excitement about what you haven't learned yet. Say your goodbyes to those you're leaving behind. Don't worry who you will meet or where you will go, the way has been prepared. The people you are to meet will be expecting you. 
a new journey has begun. Let it be magical, let it unfold. All parts of the journey are sacred and holy. Take time now to honor the new beginning. January 1st, honor the beginning. Now, as this reading registers in your body for the first time this Monday morning, take that long, slow, deep breath in, fill up the belly, widen your ribs, and that longer, slower, complete breath out. It can be audible or quiet. Try that on again, full breath in, full lung capacity, and a long, slow breath out to regulate. An invitation to place your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly. And I'd like you to imagine that you are breathing into your heart, your hands, your stomach. Moving prana, moving energy. You can acknowledge the breath, yes, but your heartbeat, the feeling of you beneath your hands. And know that right now, this is your gift. This is you tuning into your own love and your own light. And this is your truth. And you can always come back to this gesture. One hand on the heart, one hand on the belly and your body, it will remember. It will remember that this is you too. This place where you're connected, integrated and fully grounded in the present moment. Honoring what was, honoring what is and honoring what is yet to come. This is you too. You allow yourself to let go of any judgments or perceived faults. And mistakes. And you give yourself room, the opportunity to be right here, to be present with yourself, holding a space that is safe and sacred. And you can keep hands on heart and belly or release them if that feels better. And you can imagine that energy or prana extending outward from your hands and your heart permeating your space. That is your gift. You breathe it in. You breathe it out. Maybe you feel there's room for a gentle smile drawn to your face. A silent gesture of thanks to yourself for carving out this time. One of the many beautiful things that our meditation and yoga practice teaches us is slowing down enough to feel, right? Slowing down enough to connect and choose. So honoring all that you've shown up with this morning, you welcome it all in and you remember that you are safe to exist just as you are. You are safe to be just as you are. And whenever you need to reset or reground, you find stillness and take a hand to heart, hand to belly, and you feel that connection. You celebrate it, you nourish it. If you'd like more time spent in your centering meditation, please honor that request. Whether it comes from your heart, your mind, or your body, just honor it. You don't have to question it. But if there's a feeling of readiness, you'll start to move your fingers and your feet. 
If you're in the upright position or in a child pose, slowly make your way onto your back body. When you're in that supine position, you can take a full body stretch. Arms will extend, legs will do the same, and your spinal traction in the middle. With that full body extension, feel your ribs lift out of your waist. Your spine gets a little longer. You'll start to note the physical body if there's areas of resistance or tightness. They're not wrong or bad. Allow them to exist right with you. You'll firm the small of your back into your mat. Hug both of your knees up in towards your chest. Apanasana. As you feel the compression, hands can go on the shin bones, cup your kneecaps or outer thighs. Take a gentle sway right and left. Feel your back body connect to your mat and to the earth. While your jaw is unclenched, tongue is quite heavy. Take a spinal twist, drop your bent knees over to the left. Arms open like a big capital T and you gaze to the right. A lot of my job is ultimately to remind you of what you already know. So if at any point today you feel as though you want or need rest, I invite you to take that rest long before you feel exhausted or frustrated with yourself. You give yourself permission to rest as often as you feel you want or need. Now through the length of your right side, think right waist, right ribs, take a wide breath in. Exhale to unwind, come back through center and take a happy baby pose. It's fine to keep it gentle and it's important that you do. Bent knees flare wider than your side bodies and you stack your heels above your bent knees. It might feel therapeutic to your back body or your hips to sway right and left. And you close your eyes and feel into that. And maybe it's more of a turning of your hips. You lower the right hip, lift it back up, and lower the left hip. You know, come back to that closure, draw bent knees into your chest, supine twist, legs fall right, arms open, gaze left. And whether you set your gaze on something small and unmoving or your eyes closed, Acknowledge that your heart is open and your hands are open. And just imagine, just visualize that you're breathing consciously into those two areas. From your left shoulder to your left hip, take a wide breath in. Exhale to unwind and come back through center. With knees at your chest, hands on your kneecaps or outer thighs. Inhale, lengthen your legs up towards the ceiling. Feet can flex, ankles can bend. And exhale, re-bend your knees. Draw them into the torso. Try that again with your breath. Inhale, legs will lengthen. Heels kick up, toes flex downward, and exhale, rebend into the knees. Start to acknowledge your hamstrings. Again, inhale, legs lengthen, and exhale, knees bend. Smooth that out a few more times, your rhythm, your pace. On the inhalation, it's a lengthening action. And on your exhalation, it's ease with compression. Nothing is meant to be urgent. Nothing is meant to feel rushed or strained. When you honor your lung capacity, your personal pacing. As you finish up a breath cycle, knees to chest, start to rock and roll the length of your spine. Do that a couple of times front to back, front to back. Then tightly cross at your ankles, come through to a tabletop position, hands and knees. 
If you have blocks available and you tend to use them when you practice, you'd put them at the top corners of your mat just so they're easy to grab. If you like a blanket underneath your knees, grab your extra padding just so your joints are supported. Notice the spread of your fingers and a mild grip of the finger pads. In your inhale, cow pose, hammock the belly and pull your chest forward. Exhale, cat back, round through your spine, tuck your tailbone under. Inhale, cow pose, heart forward, head upward. And exhale, cat back. A few more rounds, your rhythm, your pace. If your preference is the ujjayi breath, invitation to tone your throat on the inhale and exhale breath, allowing your breath to become a little more audible. It's a little more intentional without strain or rush. Feeling into the fact that your breath is you too. The beat of your heart is you too. And the way you move your body, that is you too. And you'll come back to your neutral table, a flat back, long neck. Extend your right leg long behind you and tuck under your right toes against your mat or the floor. Take your right leg all the way over to the left. So cross the midline. Option one, take left ear over to left shoulder or change your gaze, look towards your right toes. You might floss through both of those, left ear, left shoulder, chin towards the left shoulder. Just moving different sensations around the right side of the neck. Try to keep the breath really deep and wide into your belly and ribs, moving prana and energy that your yoga practice is intended to generate. And lizard lunge on the right, large step, right foot outside of your right fingers. If hips and low back are a little bit tighter, you'd put blocks underneath your hands. Tuck under your left toes, lift your left knee up off the blanket or the floor. Inhale, lower your hips, lift your heart, gazes forward. And on your exhale, extended pyramid, two straight legs, take your time, release your head heavy. Again, inhale to your lizard lunge, heart forward, head upward. Great, and exhale, extended pyramid, two straight legs. Let's move through that three more times. Inhale, lizard lunge, fill the belly, the rib cage, and exhale, extended pyramid. Savor these last two on your own. And a reminder to feel what you're doing and how you're doing it. Child pose as you finish up your rounds. Two bent knees, big toes together. As you sink your hips back towards your heels, let your head and heart rest. If you'd like Balasana, the child pose, to be more restorative, put a block under belly, heart, or forehead. Maybe you can observe a subtle change through the right hip. There's a really big and grand change. And maybe the reality is it feels exactly the same and that's okay too. Allow tension to clear from the space behind your eyes. Your hands and fingers to soften. You can always extend your rest if you feel really content. Otherwise, you're back in a tabletop position. Lizard lunge, no, excuse me, extend left leg long behind you. Tuck under left to toes, mat or floor. And then take your straight left leg over to the right, cross the midline. Phase one, take right ear, right shoulder. Move the stretch to the left side of the neck. Phase two, take your chin to the right shoulder and look at your left toes. You'd rather floss through both of those phases Certainly that choice is welcome. Just moving in a way that feels 
both intentional and kind. Alternatively, you blindly go through the motion. Two strong hands, fingers spread wide, lizard lunge on the left, large step, left foot outside of left fingers. If you feel a little tight or restricted, grab your blocks, put them underneath your hands. Tuck under right toes, lift your right knee up off blanket or mat. With the breath, inhale, lower your hips, lift your heart. It's a spinal arch. And exhale, extended pyramid. Two straight legs, release your head, look behind you. Inhale to your lizard lunge, fill the belly, open your heart. And exhale, extended pyramid. Follow the next three breath cycles on your own. If one shape or the other feels really good and you'd rather be still, welcome that choice in. As you finish up the round that you're on, tabletop, right knee down, left knee goes back. Puppy pose. Hips stay over your knees. Stretch your hands and straight arms forward. Melt your heart and your head down to rest. Much like the child pose, if you want puppy pose to be more restorative, wedge a block under your chest and your forehead. Opt for stillness or work with this subtlety. On your inhale, lift your heart. It's about an inch lift. Your exhalation melts your heart and your head right back down. Kind of working with the shoulders. Inhale, lift the heart. It's an inch. It's very subtle. Your exhalation melt the heart and the head. If that dynamic movement feels good, maintain it. If it's more strenuous or distracting, you let it go and say no thank you. A couple more breaths. pelvic floor and abdominals engage. Rise through tabletop, hands and knees. Inhale to cow pose. And exhale, sink hips to heels, forehead towards your mat. Inhale, stand on your knees, both arms rise overhead. Chin up, heart open. Exhale, downward facing dog. Reach forward, plant your hands and elevate your hips. Let's try that again. Inhale, cow pose, front body open. Exhale, hips to heels, back body stretch. Inhale, stand on your knees, arms overhead. Exhale, downward facing dog, hands plant, hips lift. Try it one more time. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, hips to your heels. Inhale, stand on your knees, lift arms, lengthen side bodies. Exhale, downward facing dog. You'll hold the pose, but continue to move the breath. Think nose to navel, navel back to nose. If it feels especially beneficial, this first held downward facing dog, take heel pedals or chest pulses like you just practiced in puppy. You set your gaze or close your eyes. And let this be a reminder to honor where you are and what you're doing. I had a deep sense of respect for yourself and for your practice. A reminder that you can always rest and you can always say no thank you. And your inhale, shift forward. It's a high plank position. Shoulders over wrists, adjust your palms if needed. 
Great, exhale, downward facing dog. Pike your butt up in the air and press your chest towards your thighs. Again, inhale, high plank, bring it forward. Your chin is off your chest. Crown of your head draws forward. And exhale, downward facing dog. Great job, one more time. Inhale, high plank, bring it forward. Chin off the chest, jaws unclenched. Exhale, downward facing dog, high hips, open heart. Uttanasana at the back of your mat. Walk your hands to your toes at the back of your mat space. Feet can be hips width distance, and certainly you can go wider. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Hands to shins or find your thighs. Exhale, forward fold. Deep crease at your hips, head falls heavy. Inhale, halfway lift. Feel the heart pull forward, shoulder blades squeeze together. And exhale, fold for ease through your upper back. One more before you hold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Full surrender of your head. Tuck the chin to the chest. Maybe there's a deeper bend in the knees for more of a low back release. Maybe your legs are relatively straight to lengthen out hamstrings. If you like the stability, keep your hands on the mat. Maybe you touch your feet or your legs. If there's room to do it, grab opposite elbows. Let the head stay heavy, neck be soft. Three big breaths into your low belly and your low back. Stay with two. One more option to cleanse the exhale. Deep breath in through nose. Open mouth release. Solid on your footing. Feel heels to big toes. Inhale, halfway lift. Heart open. Exhale, malasana. Take a wider stance. Toes turn out. Deep bend both knees. Now with your breath on your inhale, lift your heart. Lift the crown of your head. Spine will lengthen. Keep your feet really wide, exhale, forward fold. Straighten out the legs as best you can, feel outer hamstrings. Inhale to a halfway lift, slide your hands up your inner shins. Exhale, malasana, deep bend, open hips. You only get as low as your body allows. Inhale, lift the heart, lift your head. And exhale, forward fold, keeping feet wide, hips lift up in the air. Inhale, halfway lift, shoulder blades squeeze together. Exhale, malasana, low squat. And we'll take a few breaths. There's a slight drop of the chin, so there's length and ease through the back of the neck. Feel your heart rise towards your thumbs. And if you want more stability, hands can be down or your hips can be higher. You see what's available through your joints. Relax your shoulders back and down and follow three more breath cycles. Giving yourself permission to be right here. One more. Standing forward fold, hands down, legs lengthen. Readjust so 10 toes are forward. Maybe hips width or big toes come together to touch. Up to you. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, forward bend. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, upward stretch. Arms sweep out to the sides, all the way overhead. Palms might touch. Exhale, Samasthitihi, draw hands to your heart. A mild bow of your chin to your chest. Take a deep breath in and let a long breath out. Let's reconnect to this gesture together. Right hand to the heart, left hand to the belly. Set your gaze or close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and open mouth release. You're right here choosing to be where your feet are. One more time, breathe it in and breathe it out. Maybe there's room for the gentle smile on your face. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms to rise. Exhale, forward fold, arms go wide or hands pass through your heart. Inhale, it's a halfway lift, buttocks push back. Exhale, high plank, walk your hands forward you want to modify, you'd be on your knees. Take a deep breath in 
Exhale, pass through chaturanga, lower all the way down. You'll go belly, chest, chin, flat on your yoga mat. If you're pregnant like me, you're staying in the tabletop position. Inhale to cobra pose or cow. Lift your heart, look forward. And exhale, lower your head, lower your chin back down. Two more, inhale, cobra or cow pose. Watch your facial expression and exhale, lower your heart and head down. One more time, inhale, cobra or cow for less intensity. Exhale, release your head down. And tuck your toes under. Take a deep breath into your belly. Exhale, high plank. Push the ground away, squeeze your legs straight. Hold your top of push up, big breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your hips up in the air. Hold for your in breath and follow your out breath. Walk your hands to your feet at the back of your mat space. Feel the base of your palms, the texture of your yoga mat. Inhale, it's a halfway up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, upward stretch, arms to rise. Palms together overhead. Be mindful of your neck. Exhale, samasthitihi, pull hands to your heart space. Option to find that gesture, right hand to heart, left hand to belly. Take a big breath in and a long, slow breath out. Grounded and stable. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms to rise. Lift it up. Let's add on. Exhale, goal, post your arms and take a back bend. It's okay to keep this gentle. Inhale, straight arms. You have a neutral neck. Exhale, forward fold. Crease at your hips. Let your head release at the bottom. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank or tabletop. Honor your energy levels. Be honest about what you've shown up with today. Take a full breath into your belly. Exhale, lower all the way down, belly, chest, chin. Touch the mat with the front body. Now you'll stretch your arms back like airplane wings. Hands are at your outer hips and you're in a belly down position. Inhale to locust pose. Lift your arms, your legs, your chest, and your head. Big lift. Feel your hips push down, pelvis stay grounded but then lengthen out the back of your neck. You'll pull the crown of your head forward. Maybe your hands can get a little higher, perhaps the arms a little stronger, straighter. Feel your triceps start to turn on. Stay for your inhale, lengthen your limbs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bend your elbows, plant your hands, and lift your hips. Set your gaze or close your eyes. Take a deep breath in to nourish, and a long breath out to ground. Hands walk to your feet at the back of your yoga mat. See that your feet are hips width distance. Inhale, halfway lift. Then option to shorten the stance, big toes together. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Let the energy rise. Exhale, draw your hands down. Right hand to heart, left hand to the belly. Feel this gesture as you take a deep breath in and a long breath out. And stay in your heart. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms lift. Exhale, goal post arms, shoulder blades together. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, stay for the change. Exhale, side body stretch. Right hand, grab the left wrist, bump your hips to the left, pull your hands to the right. Inhale up through center. Left hand, right wrist, exhale, side body stretch. Feel the length from right hip to right shoulder. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, squeeze your legs and arms straight. Exhale, forward fold, hands down, head release. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank or tabletop position. Hold steady as you breathe in. Exhale, chaturanga, you bend your elbows and lower halfway down. This is a tricep push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. This can all be taken from your knees. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your hips, lower your heels. Take a belly breath in and a long breath out. Child pose at the bottom of the exhale. Wide knees, big toes together. Sink your hips back to your heels. 
And we'll add on a side body stretch and a shoulder release. Walk your hands, arms, and torso over to the right. Let your right side shorten, left side lengthen. You really walk your left fingertips as far as you can away from the body. Invitation to take back of right hand to the sacrum, back of right hand to your back ribs, or all the way up to the space between your shoulder blades. Let your neck soften, head release. Let's try to regulate your breathing as best you can. Giving yourself room to feel. And giving yourself room to be seen. We all know that things can feel really vulnerable sometimes, but at that same breath, it's courageous. And it's really important that you're here. Take a breath in to your left side. And on your exhale, pass through center. Let's take this over to the left. Walk hands, arms, and torso over to the left side of your space. Really walk the right fingers as far as you can. The right lap muscle, right rib tissue. And if you want more to the left shoulder, back of left hand to the sacrum, back ribs, or high to the space behind your heart. Release your head. Soften the neck. And just notice how it feels to pause and breathe. Whether the pause and breathe is welcomed in or it's met with resistance, you just acknowledge it. You don't have to meet it with judgment or pushing it away, turning away from it, just welcome it in. Your space is safe and you're allowed to exist just as you are today. Nourishing that in your heart and your mind. Take a full breath in. Exhale, child pose, come back through center. If it feels good to rest, stay still. If you're ready to move on, inhale, table. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lengthen out the legs. To clear the compression of child pose, take a few adult heels and really exaggerate the lift and lower. Take this a little bit slower than you normally would. And then keeping both heels really high, strong on your ankles, calf muscles, change the gaze, look forward, tiptoe your feet forward to your hands. You might come up to the finger pads, might bend your knees. Inhale to a halfway lift. Feet are flat, heart is open. And exhale, forward fold. Feet can be at hips with distance or big toes together. Just be honest about where you feel more stable. Inhale, Utkatasana chair pose. Ankles crease, knees bend, arms high. Good on your exhale breath, airplane arms. Sweep back, think heart to knees, ribs to quads. Again, inhale, chair pose. Feel the weight in your heels, heart rise. And exhale, chair plane. Maybe there's that gentle smile on the face. Inhale, chair pose as you open your heart. And exhale, chair plane. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, straighten your legs, arms overhead. Exhale, goal, post your arms and let it go. Inhale, straight arms, it's a neutral neck, look forward. And exhale, forward fold, come back down. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale, low lunge, right foot stays, left foot steps back. If you want blocks under your hands, that choice is welcome. You'll drop your left knee down to blanket or mat and untuck left toes. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, lift your arms over your head. On your exhale, goal post your arms and sink your hips forward. Two more times. Inhale, straight arms, neutral neck. Exhale, goal post, lift your chin and open eyes. One more, inhale, lift up. And exhale, stretch back. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, strong rise. Exhale, half splits. Hands to blocks or floor. Straighten out to your right leg and flex to your right toes. 
place your hands so they're right underneath your shoulders. But if you want more of a balanced challenge, you would take hands to hips one or take reverse prayer hands. Bring your palms together, slide the pinky finger side of the hands up the length of your spine. Either way, your upper back is flat and the heart stays open in a half splits position. Stay for your breath in. Exhale, low lunge, hands return. Right knee bends, tuck under left toes. Inhale, easy twist, right arm high, pull your right hip back. And exhale, right hand return. Let's alternate sides. Inhale, easy twist to the left. Left arm high, so this is more for your upper back. Exhale, left hand lower. Inhale to your right, right arm up. Exhale, right hand return. Inhale, open to the left. Shoulders stack if you can. Exhale, left hand lowers. Last time through, inhale right. Pull your right hip back. Exhale, right hand down. And inhale to the left. Exhale, lower down. Drop your left knee down to the mat. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, arms to rise. Feel it again on your exhale, goal post your arms. Maybe your hips sink forward and down. Two more. Inhale, straight arms. And exhale, goal post, sink forward, massage the hips. One more time, breathe it in. And goal post, back bend. Inhale, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, low lunge. Hands to the blocks, tuck under left toes, lift your left knee up. Step your left foot forward to meet your right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, downward facing dog or vinyasa through to get there. If you opt for the vinyasa, three separate poses. Chaturanga first, back bend of choice, be kind, be mindful. Exhale, downward facing dog. Set your gaze or close your eyes and follow the next five breaths. In through your nose, down to your belly and out through your nose to soften your belly. There's three more. Last one, cleanse if that feels helpful. Inhale, lift your heels really high, look at your hands. Exhale, travel feet forward and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Feet can be hips width or big toes touch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, bend at the knees, arms sweep high. And your exhale, prayer twist over to the right. Hands together, take your left elbow over to the right knee or right thigh. When you opt for the twist, pull your left knee and left hip back. And then every time you exhale, push your right hand into your left. So you deepen that twist from the pit of the belly in your low back body. Hold, maximize breath for three, two, weight back in the heels. That's one. Inhale, chair pose, find your center, big lift, heart and hands rise. Exhale, prayer twist over to the left. And if you need a break, you take a break, give yourself grace. You hook your right elbow or right tricep on the left leg. Often the right knee loves to jut forward. That's a compensation. So pull the right knee, right hip back. And with that integrity check, start to deepen the pose. Every time you exhale, push your left hand into your right. Revolve the ribs, open your chest. Here's three. Know that you're safe and you're okay, even if it feels challenging. Two, the reminder that you can do hard things. That's one, inhale, chair pose, big lift, heart up to hands. And exhale, forward fold, let the pose go. Inhale, halfway lift, send the breath really deep. Exhale, low lunge, right foot steps back. Right knee drops down to the blanket or to your yoga mat. Inhale, Anjaneyasana. Swift your strong arms overhead. And on your exhale, goal post your arms. Work to sink your hips forward and down. Let's take two more. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, lift. 
Exhale, sink into your back bend, draw elbows back. One more time, inhale, lift it up. And exhale, goal post back bend. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, lengthen side bodies. Exhale, half splits. Hands can grab blocks. Straighten out through the leg and flex your left toes. And work to square your hips. For those of you seeking the balance challenge, you don't have to do it, but if it's available, hands to hips one, bent elbows pull back, or reverse prayer hands. Pinky finger side of your hand slides up the length of your spine. Unclenched jaw, soften brow. And as you set your gaze, take two more rounds of breath in the pose. One more. Take a deep breath into your belly. Exhale, low lunge. Bend your left knee and tuck under right toes. Lift strong off the mat. Inhale, easy twist over to the left, left arm high. Exhale, left hand lower down. And inhale to your right, more upper back, middle back focus. Exhale, right hand down. Inhale, open to the left. This is more for the low back and hips. Exhale, down. Inhale, twist to your right. Turn your neck and look upward. Exhale, right hand lower down. Last time through, inhale, left. Exhale, down. Energize heart to hands. Inhale to the right. Exhale, lower down. Right knee to mat or blanket. Inhale, on Janayasana. Sink your hips. Lift your arms, exhale, goal post and open front body. Just two more, feel it at this point, inhale, straight arms and exhale, sink your hips, squeeze shoulder blades together. One more, nice and steady, inhale, lift it up and exhale, sink forward. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, exhale, low lunge, hands down, tuck under right toes and lift your right knee. Strong step forward, right foot meets your left. Inhale, it's a halfway lift, open your heart. Now you decide, exhale down dog or vinyasa through to get there. Remember if you opt for your vinyasa, the whole thing can be done from knees. Chaturanga first, up dog or a cow pose, downward facing dog to meet. Set your gaze or close your eyes. You have the next five rounds of breath. If energy levels are really abundant today, you might hold in a high plank instead. If energy levels are a little bit lower, take a child pose. If you're walking that middle path, hold the downward facing dog. You've got four more rounds of breath. Follow three. Steady two. Last one, you're safe and you're okay. Firm through inner hands. Inhale, lift your heels, look forward. Exhale, travel forward and fold. Inhale, halfway lift, flat upper back. Exhale, forward fold. Take a deep bend in your knees, come down to a seated position. Once you balance on your sitting bones, Navasana, boat pose. Knees will hug in towards your chest. Heels or toes can be a kickstand, and you can certainly hold on to the hamstrings. If there's room to do it, parallel the shins. If there's still room to do it, extend your legs out long in front of you. Once you decide, lengthen your arms forward, phase one. Stretch your arms really wide, phase two, or arms lift up. High through the heart, lifted through the hands. Take a big breath in, lift your chest up. Exhale, reverse table, plant hands behind hips, lower your feet, big sweep open of the front body. Expand all of that compression from the boat pose. Now while your back body gets strong, front body opens, take a big breath in. Exhale, Navasana, lower your buttocks, balance on the sitting bones, choose feet, hands, and then steady the breath. Try to lift the heart and the eyes a little bit without cranking the back of the neck. Strong and engaged without strain. 
for three, two, one more inhale, lift up, exhale to reverse table, plant feet, plant hands, big lift, hips, heart, optional drop back of the head the second time. If that doesn't feel good on your cervical spine, please keep your gaze up or slightly forward. Feel your heels, your toes touch the yoga mat, really drive down to lift up. One more inhale, strong. Exhale, Navasana. This is three out of three, last time through. Balance on the sitting bones, heels or toes are your anchors, and then choose your arms. Heart up, flat upper back. You're trying to squeeze your legs in very close to your torso. Holding three. Energize the hands to energize the heart. Here's two. It's okay if the breath pace is picking up. One more inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, reverse tabletop. Plan feet, plan hands. Lift open the front body. If it feels right, drop your head back. Create a lot of space through the front of the neck. Squeeze your butt cheeks to lift your hip bones. There we go. And then squeeze the shoulder blades to lift your heart. Strong, capable, alert, and relaxed. Take a big breath in. Exhale, lower your butt down. Great job. Extend your legs forward out in front of you. A brief forward fold. Inhale, lift your arms overhead. And exhale, forward fold. Stretch open through the back body. Drop your chin in towards your chest if that feels safe. And now try to direct the breath into your low spine and back ribs. Really broad inhales, drawn out exhales. It's about five rounds in the pose. If that cleansing open mouth exhalation would benefit you right now, lean into that choice. Last two rounds. If you want more time in the passive forward bend, totally fine to stay here. Let's push hands into mat, lift the torso. Tight cross at the ankles, come through to a tabletop downward facing dog. Set your gaze at the space between your feet and then walk your hands to your toes at the back of your mat space. Inhale, it's a halfway lift. And exhale, forward bend. Inhale, upward stretch, arm sweep down out to the sides, all the way up overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart, mild bow of your chin to your chest. Let's come back to that gesture to ground, right hand to the heart, left hand to the belly. Feel into your power, feel into your breath. Big inhale, long, steady exhale. Okay, maintain this gesture if this feels right for you. Feel the weight shift into your right foot. Grip your right big toe and your right heel pushes down into the mat. Set your gaze on something in your horizon line, one-legged mountain pose. Keep right hand on the heart, left hand on the belly. Left thigh is now parallel to the floor. If you need less intensity with the balance though, left big toe can certainly be a kickstand. Welcome that choice then. While your hands press into the front body, push your front body into your hands. Find that equal but opposite action. It's an option, not a requirement. Extend the left leg, kick your left heel forward. Really squeeze your left quad. Think knee up into that muscle. You've got a steady breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Left foot comes down, head release below the heart. Hands come down off of the front body. Inhale, halfway lift, flat upper back. And exhale, fold, head below your heart. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms to rise. Lift the energy up. Exhale, hands come down. Right hand to heart, left hand to the belly. Look at your horizon line. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Now you feel the weight shift into the left foot from your left heel to big toe. Inhale, one-legged mountain pose. Keep that pressure of hands on front body. Lift your right thigh and bend at your right ankle. Maybe there's balance, maybe there's imbalance, but work to be steady and non-judgmental through whatever comes up. You honor where you are and what you're doing. Invitation to straighten your right leg, kick your right heel and flex the right toes, really pull them back to engage your right quadricep. 
Feel your heart lift and your belly breathe. One more inhale to your balancing pose. Exhale, forward fold. Right foot comes down, head release below the heart, hands come down. Inhale, halfway lift, flat upper back. Exhale, malasana, turn toes out, deep bend in both knees. If you like the more support, keep hands on the outer edges of your mat or push your hands down to lift your hips up in the air, not dropping them quite as low. If there's room to do it, hands together at the heart space. As you lift the base of your skull and drop your chin down, you might want to work the shoulders a little bit more. Drop right shoulder inside of your right knee. Inhale, open your arms, diagonal across the chest. Feel the lean back of the left shoulder, left ribs. And I know that some of you have your half or full bind. Feel free to welcome that in. Left arm across your back body. Right forearm underneath your right shin and right hip. If you're in the asymmetry, take a breath into your pose. Exhale to release, then we'll switch sides. Left shoulder inside of left knee. Inhale to open your arms. You can keep the extension absolutely fine, but if you want that half or full bind, take your right forearm around your back, left forearm underneath the left shin and see if a bind or a graze of the fingertips is available. Stay in your heart, not the ego or the overthinking mind. Hold for the breath in, exhale, forward fold. Hands come back through center, straighten out your legs, 10 toes are forward. Inhale, halfway lift, flat upper back. Exhale, high plank or tabletop position if you want the modification. Take a strong breath into your belly. Exhale, chaturanga, your elbows bend, lower halfway down. Inhale, upward facing dog, stretch open front. Exhale, downward facing dog, lift through your hips. Set your gaze or close your eyes. Get a big breath in, long, steady breath out. Inhale, lift your right leg high, down dog kick. Exhale, half pigeon, take your right knee to your right wrist. Walk your left leg back on tough left toes. Option for blocks or rolled up blankets under your right butt cheek if you like. Kickstand through the fingertips. In your inhale, lift through your heart, lift through your head. Exhale, deep bend in your elbows. Just hover your heart and head off the floor. Let's try that two more times. Inhale, lift your heart, your head. And exhale, bend your elbows, lower to a hover. One more and then you'll rest. Inhale, lift, heart, head drops back. And exhale, release into your half pigeon. And just as Kevin has demonstrated, if half pigeon is not in your cards today, you're going to lie on your back and take figure four, cross your right ankle over your left thigh in a supine position. Whether you're in the fold or on your back, let your head be relaxed. Neck soft. Leaning into a little more ease. Leaning into a little more feeling. And if your eyes are closed, maybe you can focus the breath and energy at your heart and your hands. Sharing your gift of heightened self-awareness. Your gift of loving awareness, which is our true state, our truest nature. As you focus on the sensation at your right hip, let's cleanse and clear with breath. Deep inhale to the right hip crease. Long open mouth exhale to soften. 
If you are on your back body, uncross your right ankle and windshield wipe her knees a couple of times, right and left, right and left. If you're in the half pigeon, press into your hands, lift your torso, inhale to your down dog kick, right leg extends high. Your exhalation, stack your hip to open. Take your right heel over to the left butt cheek. While your right knee is high and your left heel roots low, stay for a belly breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Second side, no ego, no expectations. Inhale, left leg up in the air. And exhale, half pigeon. Use some momentum. Take your left knee nice and wide. Let your right leg walk back. If you're joining me for the dynamic movement, kickstand your fingertips, go wider than your yoga mat. Inhale, lift your heart and your head. Exhale, bend your elbows to hover heart and head off the mat. Two more. Inhale to your back bend. Head back without pain in the neck. And exhale, bend your elbows, find that hover. Downstairs. Oh. Let's go one more time. Inhale to lift your heart and your head up. And exhale to release. Surrender into your half pigeon pose. Fully let your heart and your head rest. A reminder, if it's not happening on the left side, lie down on your back. Take the supine position. Left ankle over your right quadricep. Very simply noticing how it feels to be here. It's not about overthinking the pose. This is about feeling the pose. Often it can be helpful to close your eyes that will heighten the therapeutic quality of the hold. And when you eradicate the visual, just how does it feel to be in your body right now? Knowing that right here in this moment, this is you too. Consciously giving yourself permission to exist exactly as you are. You can concentrate without strain. Set your inner gaze down to your left hip. Focus there. Take a deep breath into your body. Open mouth, exhale for ease. If you're in the supine position, uncross left ankle. Take those windshield wipers of the knees. Mobilize your hips. If you're in half pigeon, return to palms. Open heart, lift your head. Now take your downward dog kick. Extend left leg high in the air. Press your chest back towards your right leg. On an exhalation, stack your hips to open, left heel towards your right butt cheek. As you flirt with the height on your left knee, press your right heel nice and low. Hold for the inhale, feel the breath. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your heels and look at your hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, it's a halfway lift. Shoulder blades retract and engage. Exhale, forward fold. Take a deep bend in your knees, come down to a seated position, and take your legs wide into a V-shape from your hips out to your heels. Ground into your sitting bones. You can do that one of two ways, sway of hips or scoot of flesh, either is effective. Your inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Arms to rise, lift out and up. Feet are flexed and exhale, fold down the spacious middle. You can come to hands or blocks, elbows and forearms. If your anatomy allows and it's a good choice for you today, really splay the elbows, release the belly, the heart and the head. For the first few breaths, we'll activate a little more strength in the forward bend. Press your heels down into the floor. You might feel the inner thighs and your hamstrings engage. 
Keep that active press down of the heels for two more breaths. We had that quad strengthening earlier. So now into the hamstrings, one more breath cycle, really push your heels down. And become wonderfully passive through your heels and feet. Through that passive change, walk your upper body over towards the left. Let your hands and arms frame your left leg. If it helps the revolve of the torso, push your left hand down into the floor, dip your right shoulder and right ribs downward. Stay right here just a little bit longer with your practice. held by loving awareness as you walk your upper body over to the right. Staying relatively low, hands and arms frame your right leg. Both heels and feet are passive. If it helps the revolve, press your right hand into the ground, dip your left shoulder and front left ribs close to the floor, or close to your straight right leg. And you'll stay at your depth, come back through center, torso, neck, and head. Press your hands into the ground, lift your torso up. And then close off your legs, knees bend, feet plant about hips width distance. Plant your hands behind your hips, and then windshield wiper knees. This right here would be option one, and you can absolutely stay here. Phase two, if you're looking to explore, you're going to lift your hands up towards your heart. You take out the weight bearing on the hands. This is phase two. If phase two is well received, then you move on to phase three if you'd like. Without your hands, come to stand up on your knees. So this is for mobility and strengthening of the hips. If you want nothing to do with phase two or phase three, please stay in phase one, where you're bearing weight on your hands behind your hips. Moving to the right and to the left. And once you kindly balance out both sides, you'll find a supine position. Optional blanket at the back small edge of your mat space. Recline to your back. And bend into your knees, set your feet about hips width distance, arms long at your sides, palms down. Inhale to bridge pose, lift your heart, your front ribs and your hips up in the air. If shoulders allow and there's room to bind, shimmy your shoulders underneath your chest, Interlace your fingers, find that strong clasp, and press the outer edges of your hands down. Heels and toes press down to lift up, much like the reverse table you practiced earlier this morning. It's gentle, but press the back of your head into the mat for a little more breath to move through neck and throat. Grounded and stable, take a big breath in. And exhale, release the bind and lower your hips back down to the ground. Reclined butterfly pose, soles of feet together, knees nice and wide. Collectively, we return to that gesture, right hand to chest, left hand to belly. Close your eyes and just feel the breath at your heart, your stomach, and your hands. A reminder that the sequence of postures that we move through, that's what you're doing with the different shapes and the experience of different sensations. But the yoga is actually how you're being. You're being kind and compassionate, patient and non-harming. You're being honest about where you're at and what you've shown up with today. But that's the gold of our yoga and meditation practices. 
yoga is how you're being. And as you reconnect to yourself with this gesture, hands to heart, stomach, breath moving, prana moving, close off knees and open hips. Hug your right knee in towards your chest and let your left leg go long and heavy. Rotate your ankles a couple of times. And take a deep breath in. Exhale, spinal twist. Guide your right leg all the way over to the floor. That's your left. Arms can open. So your hands and your heart can open. And just notice what feels better for you at this point in your day. Is it to ground the right shoulder? Or is it to press the inner right knee down to the floor? Relax your jaw and your eyelids. Savor your breath in. Exhale to unwind, level hips and low back. And give your right knee that solo squeeze up towards your chest, your armpit hollow, and then switch out your legs. Half wind relieving pose on the left, left knee to chest or shoulder. Rotate your ankles a couple of times if that feels good. And you'll take a sweet breath in. Exhale, supine twist. Left leg, cross the midline, go all the way over towards your right. You feel chest open, hands open. When you come from the place inside of you that's curious and kind. Does it feel better to ground the back of your left shoulder or ground your inner left knee? If you'd rather not choose, you rock right and left. And just feel into both. Hold for the breath in. Exhale, unwind, come back through center. Left knee gets that solo squeeze into chest or shoulder. And happy baby pose to neutralize. Lengthen out the back of your neck. Feel heavy through your tailbone. Open through your arches. If it feels soothing at this point, come back to that gentle cradle right and left. As if you're holding a small child, nothing is urgent or jarring. And as you ground your energy and attention and loving awareness, find the closure, knees to chest. Let's round up through shoulders, neck, and head. Take a big breath in. And exhale, release into Shavasana, your final resting pose. If you have the props to support your Shavasana, Blanket under your neck and head, perhaps a bolster underneath bent knees. If it doesn't feel good to take the supine position, you lie on your left side body. And so welcome yourself and those in this practice to the final resting pose. Take a deep breath in. Open mouth, audible exhale. For the very first time in this practice, you stop breathing deeply on purpose. In Shavasana, you allow the breath to become wonderfully easy and automatic. And give your whole body permission to relax. And you give your heart permission to open. As it's during this pose, you hold safe and sacred space for the integration, the absorption of everything you have done today. From showing up to your centering meditation and moving through your yoga practice. And 
my hope for you is that you can savor and appreciate your precious time well spent conscious chosen rest With loving awareness, 
Let this land in your heart and welcome it in. All the parts of the journey are sacred and holy. Take time now to honor your beginning. January 1st, 2024. Take a deep breath in and a long grounding breath out. And a reminder for what your heart knows, even after seven minutes and rest, it's still okay to take your time. Delicate movements, find your toes and your fingers. Supple rotations through ankles and wrists. Maybe there's a yawn or a sigh that naturally occurs. When your forearms rise away from the ground, that's your personal cue, take a full body stretch. Elongate arms and stretch out your legs. Acknowledge the suppleness of your physical body, certainly, but acknowledge the suppleness of your heart and your spirit, too. From the small of your back into your mat and hug both knees sweetly into your chest. Be gentle with yourself as you roll to fetal pose on your right side. And in the fetal pose, the shape that represents a fresh start, a rebirth, a new beginning, invitation to pause and gratitude. A silent gesture of thanks to yourself and to this community for showing up today and honoring a collective new beginning. With your eyes soft, take your time as you transition upright to a comfortable seated pose. And if comfort entails height, you sit on your prop or props of choice. And with a sense of pride, offer your heart lifted upward. We'll return to that gesture one last time, right hand to the heart space, left hand to the belly. And you feel the breath at your heart, your stomach and your hands. As you offer your wholehearted attention, together we journey through the prayer of metta loving kindness. May our energies and efforts be of benefit to the greater good of all beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace. May all beings find their freedom. May all beings move through the world with ease. And my hope for you is that your healing, your practice is continuous. The intention held in your heart today, steady and of benefit to our family of all beings. With a gentle smile on your face, take a deep breath in. Open mouth release. With an abundance of love and gratitude extended to you, we close our practice with a collective bow. Namaste. Thank you so much, everyone. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Thank you all so much for being here today. It means the world to me and I'm so grateful for starting the new year and celebrating with you all. I thank you for acknowledging my three years and showing up and practicing and taking the time. I'm so grateful for you all. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Bye Happy Catherine. Thanks you all, peace. Thank you. Bye Mike, take care of yourself. Bye -bye. You too. Bye, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thanks, Jane. Thank you. Take care. You're welcome, Katie. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks, Julia, for practicing with your mom. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Patty, Susan. Thanks for practicing. Hi, Bridge.
Lindsay, thank you. And pass my thanks to Jamie as well for our lovely little baby girl gift. That was so sweet of you. <laughs> you got it. Happy New Year, Caitlin. Same to you, Lindsay. See you soon. Caitlin, have a good week. Oh, thank you. Same to you. Bye, Patty. Lovely to see you. It's been a while. Thank you. Yeah, and Susan here and my mom. I was just flipping through the chat. Bye, mom. I'll give you a call, okay? Okay, bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you. Love you too, babe. Bye, mom. Here we go. Your channel is a guest. Oh, well, Cassandra Powell, who I haven't seen in years. I know her from Revival. That's been a really long time. Yeah. Oh, Nadia, she did the teacher training at Yoga by Degrees. Oh. So great. <laughs> 